to face to face. And today we're going to speak about immigrants. We're going to talk about refugees. We're going to talk about peace. I'm with Christopher. Welcome to Face to Face. Yeah, thank you for having me. And you are a big activist working for peace and refugees. Can yes. you explain? Yeah. Um, well, uh, my background before getting into peace activism was actually environmental activism and um, working on solutions uh, for biodiversity loss, um, climate change, and some of our ecological challenges. Mm -hmm. But um, the more that you, I think, dive into the realms of peace, you start to realize that many of the different issues we're facing at this time are interconnected. And the migration um, issue that we're facing right now on Earth is also deeply connected with our ecological challenges. Mm -hmm. And so um, um, kind of the vessel that contains those different forms of activism is peace. And so when we use the word refugees, um, to me, that's a, a name that automatically implies um, nationalism in general, because it implies that somebody is supposed to be indigenous to one area and not supposed to live in another area. And um, I believe that we can um, overcome some of these paradigms um, in this at least century, but I think actually sooner within the next few decades and build systems that are... So your organ yeah. organization is named <laughs> Peace oh, Accelerator, yeah, yeah, no? Yeah, our organization is called Peace Accelerators. Yeah, so and so we focus on architecting peace building operations. Okay. Yeah. And uh, can you talk about some of the projects you have already done, sure. and then we will we will move to a crazy one? But sure. Let's, yeah, let's happy do to. the. So we fo we started out just focusing on um, two things: one, the International Day of Peace, which is a day created by the United Nations, mm -hmm. and just raising awareness that the day exists and believing that in the future it can become a global holiday, mm -hmm. first holiday that the planet celebrates together. That's a good idea. Um, so we, we celebrate that every year. But um, beyond that, uh, other things we did initially, um, we started having a monthly gathering where we prepare meals for people in need, and it wasn't just about the food; it was really about making sure that we have conversations with people the that sometimes may seem invisible in urban environments. Yeah. And so you do it in, in New York or it's in different cities or what? what yeah, what, our, our main focus is here. We have we have some people that um, have done some work under the Peace Accelerator's name um, in Oslo, Norway. Okay. But for the most part, right now, we're, we're really focused on New York and then spreading um, in the 2020s to some other cities as well. Okay. So I know you are working on a crazy, crazy, crazy project. Can you describe <laughs> it? Can you... <laughs> Um, I don't know if it's too crazy. I, I actually, I think, in many ways, to me, it feels very sane. But yeah. um, we have an, we have a project called Farms Not Arms. Okay. Uh, it might be the project you're referring to. And Farms Not Arms is um, we co-design um, regenerative community farms with many different constituents involved. So mostly with refugee leaders. And the concept is really helping refugees um, have agency and, um, and being the proponents of the next paradigm and, and, and the future that we all want. And so what we do is uh, also, it's, it's meant to also help battle some of the worst um, uh, reasons for climate change that are taking place right now. And so um, Farms of Arms is built to um, restore soil increase soil fertility while also mitigating the amount of water that we use to grow crops, um, while also increasing food security for refugees. Um, but in the long term, it has some, some other goals as well. And so where, where are you doing presently? Do you are you mm -hmm. developing in, in, in here in New York or are you developing in other countries? Actually, two places. Yeah. So one, um, we are work, We are looking to design a farm really close to the UN. There, we're oh, lucky. that's a crazy project. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I was, I was talking well, about. Yeah, well, there happens to be an empty plot of land um, close to the UN, and it's been sitting empty for a while, and our goal is to cultivate okay, it. Okay, hold on, hold on, yeah. because the piece of land, it's between the FDR and I think it's, I don't know if it's uh, uh, First Avenue or something, but anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's south of the UN, mm -hmm. and it's for five or six blocks down. Yeah. So it's a huge piece of land in middle midtown Manhattan, yeah. New York City. Yeah. And you're going to get this piece of land to do what? To cultivate what we call a peace farm community park. And the goal is building an inclusive area that all are welcome, that all can work with Mother Nature and with the land together. Um, and also showing models of regeneration for all the world leaders when they come in for United Nations General Assembly Week. 
And so right now we have a couple uh, funders that have, have shown interest in being involved. But the neat thing is we don't necessarily have to acquire the land. We know the family that we know of the family that owns it. And we have some pretty deep connections with some amazing organizations. But our goal is really just to bring them into the conversation and have some real dialogue about what's the most important thing we can do with that plot of land to have global implications that can move us into a better future. And we believe that we are doing this in a really intelligent manner. So you're going to tell me that they're not going to build any building on that piece of land. <laughs> oh. uh, our goal isn't, we're not saying never, oh, okay. but our goal no. is at least saying initially, while it's sitting empty, why don't, oh, we, why yeah. don't we turn it into something beautiful? Oh, yeah, you can, you and, can get it. Uh, yeah, so, so our goal is to grow an yeah. ecosystem okay. and to grow a beautiful farm. And yeah. maybe it's not permanent, but, but at least a place that everybody no, no, can come no. to. If it's, if it's on that frame, I see it more, yeah. more, yeah. more doable yeah. Yeah. than, than yeah, we'll because it's a, <laughs> it's a very special, it's a very yeah. special place. And w w the UN will be involved in some ways, or can in some ways, um, yeah. I, we, we, you know, we, we're fans of a lot of what the United Nations has done. Um, we haven't, we haven't fully engaged them yet, but we, we are right now working with an organization called the International Peace Institute that we've mm -hmm. partnered with mm -hmm. on this initiative, and they kind of have one foot in and one foot out of the United, United Nations. Um, they were started by the third Secretary General of the United Nations, and but they're independent, which we like because. Um, sometimes the United Nations can be a little bit complicated. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> could be very complicated. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, so we like maintaining our independence. Uh, and so, uh, but uh, to go back to the peace story, w w how? W what is the relation between? I mean, be besides the refugees are cause by some of them by war, conflict, and so on and so forth, but not all the refugees yeah. come from that story. So mm -hmm. um, how do you make relationship between uh, the peace with more like a military type of usually uh, um, mm -hmm. condemnation or, or refusing to see the, the military expanding and, and the relation with, with the refugee crisis who is happening almost all over, I mean, yeah. from... Great question. So, so I think it starts one with two things: um, what our definition of peace is, and then also what global security means. And that's often why we go to wars for issues of national and global security. Um, so, what we're trying to do is redefine how we think of peace as not only you know the, the state of non-war or not being at violence, but really where biodiversity and humanity thrive together. And so um, we believe that's actually where we have true global security, because right now, even if we remove all the war on the planet, um, the way that we are living is actually destroying our ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to do that, we will not survive and we'll have even more war. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is really face both of these issues somewhat at the same time with a holistic solution. Mm -hmm. So our goal is really to regenerate ecosystems. But we're trying to figure out where do we find the human utility to do that. Um, but right now we're facing a ref refugee crisis of 65 million-ish people um, on the planet and a lot of national governments are not wanting these people to be incorporated into their national system because they believe they're bad for their local economies or they're bad for, the, for, for their, their communities. And so what we're trying to do over time is show that refugee leaders will actually be the, um, the proponents of the future and be the, um, the re they will lead the regeneration movement and actually be good for every economy um, to, to build healthier ecosystems and actually to, to drive um, the economies as well. And so, so that we believe that we're working on models that we can scale. And we want to scale those, though, in a future years with some, with some of the military expenditure, because we believe this is a smarter solution to global security. So really, we're just trying to make an alternative argument um, or, or proposal. So now you are telling me that you're going to take military, you're going to get some military <laughs> money, and you're going to move some military money. I'm too. not saying that we will. I'm saying <laughs> no, that. I, say, it's, I, mean, I, I think it, we're more it, trying it, to it, like open up dialogue. Yeah. Um, I think we're trying to open up the human psyche into possibilities because a lot of the ecological um, activists feel like there's nowhere to turn and there's no resource to get all of the funds that we need to save our planet at this time. 
but in truth, we're actually spending seven hundred fifty billion yeah, dollars. We have fifty-five percent of the U.S. federal budget is its military expenses. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one, two, three. I mean, that's not right. the, technically to do it. It's it's yeah. very cool. It's and, we're very and we're living at a time where we actually have the least amount of violence we've ever had on the planet, and we're actually growing. It seems through data more peaceful every generation. So our goal is. How can we reallocate that military expenditure into regeneration um, for the planet, mm -hmm. and maybe even use military's um, infrastructure, such as some of these warships, into now coral restoration or you know uh, forest restoration and, and replenishment and things like that? Because that truly creates a global narrative that gives hope to all the people on the earth. And it's what we really need at this time when we have this hypernationalist movements and things. So. I mean, how do you, are you in contact with, you know, general and, and military structure or with ex like veteran? I mean, I have a lot of friends of mine who are veteran for peace and, mm -hmm. and you know, all of this. Yeah, great so, question. Um, that, that is our goal over the next year. Mm -hmm. We are really close to, we also are working on a sister farm in Lebanon with some refugee leaders um, in Lebanon. Oh, wow. So we'll have one, our goal is to have one here as a model and then one in Lebanon with refugees. Okay. Um, but. As we're building these models, we do look to get more in touch with especially some veterans that have been rather high up in the military to really sit down and have some dynamic dialogues and also learn from them. We have deep respect for anyone that, you know, that fights for the idea of peace, but now we just kind of want to redirect that energy. Yeah, because it's going to have to be, I mean, for the, you cannot remove the military, but you, we need to transform it so it become a humanitarian force instead Absolutely. of being a, a military uh, force. And I think because some of the quality in, are needed in, in situation and more is situation complicated, more uh, you need intervention quick with, with people who, who know how to get to specific places in very complicated situation. I mean, I can imagine the fire in, in Arizona, in, um, in Brazil yeah. with the Amazon, I mean, to get into that type of situation, yeah. you need people who, who really know what, what they're doing. So Yeah, and um, most of those communities are often the indigenous communities. I, one, I, I'm a, not a big fan, I'd say, in many ways of Bolsonaro by any means, but, um, but it seems that in the last few days that he did um, ask the military to help with the fires, which he also might have helped cause the fires, it seems. I mean, it seems quite intentional. And oh, yeah? we had a big ceremony last night to, to bring people from New York together to, uh -huh. to figure out what we can do for the Amazon, because it is a huge issue of global security, and it affects so many of our climate models across the planet, not to mention biodiversity. It's the, yeah. you know, it has the, it's the epicenter of biodiversity on the terrestrial plane. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that um, we, we need to be really turning to some of the indigenous communities. And, and it's proven through data that all the areas in the world where the indigenous live, um, the, the natural resources are more protected. Yeah. Um, and so oh, yeah, they have a more global way of, of looking at the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't grow as fast as right. our system believe is growing, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the strength of it, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and we and we, and we kind of owe it to our future generations. Yeah. You know, oh. we, we 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 have to live in lifestyles that can uh, most indigenous believe protect this earth for seven generations, yeah. and right now we're barely even protecting it for yeah, the for, for, for the next months, generation yeah, yeah. behind us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Any plug? We we'll wrap him up. So my only plug is if you don't know what day the International Day of Peace is, which was created by the United Nations, um, it is September twenty first. And I encourage you to think of how you can celebrate this day every year. Our organization believes um, that it will be the first planetary holiday in the future. And we do what we can to coordinate many organizations to celebrate this day every year. And then thank you so much for, for coming to Face to Face. And uh, that was your show. Uh, up to hear from you very soon. And please keep watching your news on Presenza.com. Thank you.